Hey, Canada. We're going to touch down on a topic that uh, I've kind of questioned. In the back of my mind, instinctively, I've always questioned this whole thing on social media. Because I know. I mean, I've already, I already have heard about the fact that there are bots, right? Cyber bots and algorithms and many different methods that are used to um, completely misconstrue the kind of popularity or likes thumbs up right or or other aspects of social media and when i first started hearing about the fact that you could pay you know a certain company that have produced software you can pay them a certain amount of money and it's usually not all that expensive but you can pay the money and they'll give you more likes or more bots or some of them are not even just computer algorithms some of them are actual real world human beings but they use an algorithm and a bunch of people if that you can pay them and they'll like your page or subscribe to your page or create this scenario where it seems that you're much more popular than you than what you truly are and to me it's like sure i could jump on that bandwagon i mean especially if it's only going to be a few hundred bucks over the course of a few months now that's not that's not a gigantic amount of money but i was like no nah, i'm not gonna sell my fucking principal out principles out or pay someone to like me that's like that's like in the real world outside the this online social media sphere that's like in the real world like me paying people to like what i have to say fuck that shit i don't want anything to do with that because would i ever actually have any genuine understanding of what people are thinking the thought processes that are run through their head if i if if they only agree with me because i paid them to right i mean pfft, no but this is in reference to and it's a cbc article of course world under the world headline uh partisan twitter bots distorting u.s presidential candidates popularity so partisan twitter bots distorting u.s presidential candidates popularity thousands of automated accounts known as bots flood sites with messages for and against candidates so i'll give you a real quick rundown and some of these bots can seem very much like regular human beings because these are just algorithms so you know if there's a keyword whether it's donald trump right if you if the keywords donald trump are put in there or politics then as soon as the bot recognizes those words presented in an article or a comment or, or any post that you put on on social media it'll come across and they might have a you know a backup of maybe 20 30 derogatory statements towards trump and the, the bot will just randomly pick one of them, but it'll seem like a person that's opposing your ideas, your views, your uh, preferences, your, your, your opinions, right? But, but we're seeing now that, and this is all, like I said, this is all, we all know this to be factually true now. This is being reported by the CBC and Adrian Arsenal. These people realize that if you, you present a story without at least uh, having any semblance of uh, reporting actual honest facts, I, that's the thing. It really comes down to how propaganda comes to be. Now, the initial initial story is the fact that there are bots, right, that uh, are propagated in the internet. What they say afterwards, the narrative presented by political propagandists or pundits, that is the part that is completely subjective. Now, the objective aspect of the story is the fact that there are bots, computer programs and software that is used to propagate some form of populism one way or the other or a marketing scheme the fact that we all know that this kind of thing exists it should never be considered a conspiracy in any way shape or form or that people have unfounded fears of the fact that their social media sites platforms or even their personal pages are being hampered or hindered in any way when we know that all this stuff exists we know that people have the ability to create these bots right this software that promotes and espouses whatever the programmer wants so just because you might have 10 actual real physical human beings 
going against a government narrative if the bots are sent out to the tune of you know thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions it can seem overwhelming and the people that are paying attention to both sides of the uh, the opinion right they'll they'll automatically want to lean on the side of the populist of the of the the opinion that's espoused by the bulk or the majority because that's what democracy is all about so an algorithm today is all about promoting populism that's what tricks the human mind into thinking well maybe i should think that way because it seems like the majority of people think that way and if i'm going against or opposing majority think thinking or opinion yeah it's probably not going to work out very well me for me in this particular world or this geographical ge geographical landmass that i currently reside in this is what it really comes down to. Loser Donald Trump, oh, at Loser Donald Trump wasn't born yesterday. It was actually the day before. Just after 3 p.m. Eastern Time on October 18th, the baby bot burst into the Twitterverse. Someone somewhere who is clearly not a fan of the Republican presidential nominee wrote a piece of code for a Twitter account that would fill people's feeds with anti-Trump messages. Right? It all sounds a bit childish, but... At loser Donald Trump and its thousands of cranky cousins are changing the conversation around this election. They might even be changing minds. Bots are changing minds. Collective um, propaganda. Of course, that's what it's all about. The brand new baby bot started with a few hundred posts an hour. And by the end of Wednesday night's presidential debate, it had retweeted thousands of times, earning itself the dubious honor of the busiest bot of the night, according to social media and analytics from Sissian Canada. It far outpaced the next contender, America Right Now, at Am Right Now, a conservative pro-Trump bot or automated account devoted to posting conspiracy theories, which, see how they put it? Devoted to posting conspiracy theories which on debate day created 1,200 posts. At loser Donald Trump more than doubled that output. So, I mean, even right here, I mean, <laughs> this is, may very well be a, you know, I think it is an actual real human being that's putting forth this, but she's doing the same kind of disservice as the bot would do by completely misrepresenting the truth of the facts of what's, what's happening, right? Adrian Arsenal is, is choosing, she chose a political side and she's going to promote and espouse the kind of rhetoric that will lean on that side of the political spectrum. Terrible, man. That's terrible. The brand new, oh. It far outpaced the next contender, American Right Now. Uh, okay, no, never mind, I got this one. Oh, wait, no, no, this is it. It far outpaced the next, okay. A conservative pro-Trump bot or automated account devoted to posting conspiracy theories, which on debate day create 1,200 posts. Oh, no, that's exactly what I put, yeah. At loser Donald Trump more than double that output. So the bot at loser Donald Trump doubled that. Sissian's James Rubeck talks proudly of watching the birth of this bot. Seeing its first retweet, he and his team set to work trying to figure out its story. Turns out it wasn't complicated. The bot takes all tweets that mention at real Donald Trump, Donald Trump's verified Twitter handle with the word loser or loser or hashtag loser it finds those and shares them indiscriminately it will share every single post rubik said uh, i've got to read this one little more little portion more but once again I'll, I'll post the link in the description of this video to this article so you can read it and and go from there but this last part i want to read is on this the day after the debate the bot seems a bit tired Rubeck says it's changing its pattern. It appears to be taking a break for an hour, then sending out a flurry of 120 posts the next hour. It's like doing high-intensity Twitter interval training. Only Rubeck, only Rubeck suspects the clever bot is trying to mix it up in order to avoid being suspended by Twitter, which is trying to clean its ranks of bots. So once again, I mean, I'm not going to read any more on this. There's a very few. Actually, wait a minute. Uh, actually, no. It's quite a, it's quite a bit more in depth as far as this article goes. But like, it makes when I read these entire articles, it makes the video go on way too long. And like I say, if there's anything in the articles that I haven't covered that you find is shocking or disturbing that I, sh you feel I should have, then comment in the video description below, and I will make sure that when I read it, that I'll go back and try to correct anything that I've missed out on. 
But in reality, what we're talking about are these bots or these algorithms or these programmed people that aren't people at all. They're just, like I said, they're just ones and zeros on a screen. But they've created this, this false sense of popularism or populism regarding politics or a candidate or even they use they're even using it for marketing purposes but marketing is one thing you know if you buy the wrong thing because you were propagandized in that manner then the negative consequences are pretty minute as a result right you might you might be able to kiss your money goodbye but in reality that's about the the, the most detriment aspect of that interaction but when you're talking about the political realm the political sphere when you're talking about politics where people have this mystical or this conceptual idea that they have this legitimate authority to control dictate and plunder the wealth of the masses that's where it becomes vitally important that we start pointing out the fact that populism should never be construed as or majority or mob rule as as any form of legitimacy right because now that we know that there are people that can use algorithms or write codes that can create uh a, a false sense of populism well once again it's all up in the air so once again we got to get back to the basics where it's all about the individual you can't manipulate and distort individual thinking right or well some people may attempt and try that but it's easy to prove that they're incorrect when if someone tried to misrepresent something i had to say i have the ability to show them otherwise but if they try to put forth the message that they're representing what a whole bulk of people say well there's no one that i can point to to say well they didn't say that right that's the key aspect is individual versus the collective it always comes back to individual versus the collective when you're especially when you're talking about liberty or freedom oriented topics or discussions so even in my own personal page whether it's my facebook or youtube channel yeah, they're not nearly, not even close to being as popular as far as numbers in, in regards to likes or subscriptions or shares. I don't really care, though. I don't care because I know how that can be completely manipulated and distorted to make things appear completely contrary to what they truly are in the real world. So I don't, I don't do things just so I can seem popular. That's why, <laughs> you know... I suppose control freaks and sociopaths really it really pissed them off that I'm still going and it's like but we've tried everything we can to hamper and hinder and and prove to this guy that what you say means nothing to anybody right and I get that's what they probably would like to present to the masses but I don't go along with that narrative I don't care if that is even remotely the case because I know what I'm trying to expose I know the honesty and sincerity and integrity and the principles of the philosophy that I'm exposed I know how important that is so even if if I, I can't appeal to you know a majority or the bulk of the mass in my particular geographical landmass or those who I'm trying to espouse my my message to it doesn't matter it's not about populism you know being honest, being truthful, being objective, being logically consistent. If it's not popular, well, I mean, I do wish it was popular, but just because it's not in this current age, in this current environment, means nothing to me. Two plus two has to equal four, whether people want to accept it or not. If the majority of people were trying to tell me two plus two isn't four, it's five, I would seem like the wrong one, right? I'd have the wrong answer, or I would be like, how could this one guy be right when there's everyone else is telling him? But the facts would still remain consistently objective that I was right. Just like right now. I know the kind of stuff that I talk about and that I espouse is correct morally, philosophically, and universally principled. That's what matters most to me. That's why I don't care about the populism bullshit. That's why I don't care about numbers or statistics. Objective truth, logic, and consistent reasoning matters most to me. It's Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.